Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin. It is Monday morning, and this week my plan is to start laying the groundwork for something that's been hanging out on the Trello board for quite a long time, and that is at least a partial rewrite of my combat system. Y'all know I've had this very vanilla placeholder combat system in Dauphin since just a few weeks into the project. It's not far off what you would get in something like an older 2D Zelda title. You can swing a melee weapon out in front of you, and you can also currently fire out a projectile attack. This has been a great prototype so far, but since a big part of Dauphin's gameplay will be engaging in combat against corruption, I think it's time to start putting some more effort into this system. There are so many directions I could head in here and I've been flip-flopping between them for a while now. A major sticking point for me has been deciding on the source of the player's attacks, and what I mean by that is, should the player's attacks come from something like a skill tree into which the player invests points, or instead from the weapons and armor they collect. Though I really, really love games like Diablo and Borderlands where you're building a skill tree, I'm not sure such a pattern would work super well for Dauphin. I quite frankly have concerns about my own ability to design and balance a series of fun and meaningful skill trees, and on top of that, my desire to fill Dauphin with creative and unique loot items for the player to hunt down fits the pattern of item-driven abilities a bit better. At least, I think it will. So, given all that, where do we start designing an item-driven combat system? Well, first we need to be able to equip items, and we certainly can right now, but only to a very limited number of slots, meaning two. And you have to do that currently from within the Field Notes menu, which would definitely be cumbersome if you wanted to use more than two weapons or tools in a combat scenario. To fix this, I'm going to take a hint from the many wonderful games that have solved this problem already by creating what I'll call an item bar. Having a bar like this will give me a lot of flexibility, allowing the player to use weapons, tools, potions, and plenty of other items without needing to open up their inventory, or in my case, the field notes, every single time. To start, I've only created artwork for the slots that will compose this bar, in both a selected and deselected state. Have about an hour before work this morning, I'm going to dive in and start building some UI. Hey everyone, back at 8.30 this Monday evening after work, dinner, and some productive time spent out in the garden where I met this cool little guy. The morning's development session went pretty well, and I actually hit a nice little stopping point before work, so I figured we could take a quick look. So here we are on the beach, and of course the big highlight here is this new item bar down here on the bottom. Now this is definitely a UI that's still a work in progress, but honestly I think we're off to a pretty good start here. I really like the deselected slots being kind of transparent so you can see behind them, and I like the elevated kind of shiny look of our selected slot here, which is of course the first slot in this row by default. Now apart from just having these laid out on the screen, I can actually scroll between those using my scroll wheel. So one forward scroll click, on my scroll wheel will move forward that selection by one little tile and same if we go backwards. So I can scroll pretty fluidly between all of these slots and of course if we get to the end it will just loop around back to the beginning. So this is actually a pretty good start I think. It feels really nice to interact with. It's very snappy switching between these slots and honestly just off to a pretty good start. The setup for this item bar so far has been super easy and only about 50 lines of code which is awesome. Right now we're looking at the item bar slot of which the item bar is composed. You can see that it's just a control parent with a text direct as a child. If we jump into the script, there's really only one function right now and that is set selected. And all that does is set this little flag right here and change the texture to be either that deselected texture that is transparent or the selected texture which is that orange color. If we switch over to the item bar itself, we see those six slots here as we saw in the demo and they're represented over here on the left in the hierarchy. The item bar itself is just a control and its main child is a horizontal box container. After I have that configured to align to the center and provide some spacing, all I have to do is drop six of these in here and they will be laid out perfectly for me as you see here. Here in the item bar script, we can see all 50 lines of code that provide all of that scrolling functionality I just showed you. Right when this scene comes to life, the first thing we do is call register slots, which just saves an array of all of the child item bar slots. Once we have that, we make a call to select the first one, so that, that first one always appear as yellow when we start up the game. Once we have that initialization done, we can listen for input from the mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down, which are mapped to these two events here in my project settings. When those inputs are detected, we can just call select next slot and select previous slot, which look at the selected slot and the array of item slots that we got at the beginning to determine which slot we should select next and deselect all of the other ones. Very pleased with how simple this was to implement. 
course, there's actually no data being stored in this item bar yet. That's going to be the tricky part, but I think that's a good task for tomorrow. Going to kick back for the rest of the evening, I think. Maybe jot down a few ideas, but in any case, we'll catch up in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Saturday morning. This is the part of every devlog where I explain that I had the best intentions to record and share progress updates throughout the week, but just got overwhelmed by work and barely was able to work on the game, let alone film. No exception this week, I'm afraid, but I did still manage to make some pretty good progress on the item bar and its more major pieces of functionality. I have a few more things I wanna knock out today and hopefully wrap up this devlog. So let's jump in and take a quick look. First, we'll take a look at some visual enhancements here. Those of you with a keen eye may notice that our first slot here, which is selected, is just a tiny bit bigger than the other slots here in the row. And sure enough, when we actually start to scroll through these, you'll notice that the slot that's selected kind of animates to become a bit bigger than all the other slots. It's a little bit easier to see if I kind of scroll through them here. This is just a very small visual tweak that I thought added quite a bit to the experience of scrolling through these slots. And similarly, I also have just a little clicking sound to let you know that you've changed items. Apart from just the visuals, I've started to give this thing some real functionality. So if I open up my field notes, you can see in my buoyancy compensator vest, I have a fishing pole and a sword. And I used to be able to drag these into the slots here next to the player, but I can no longer do that. And I'll explain that in a minute. Where I can drag this equipment now is down onto the item bar. So I'll drag the fishing pole down into the first active slot and the sword into the second slot. Because that fishing pole is in the active item bar slot, it's going to appear on the player's back. And when I left click, it will try to execute whatever action is associated with that item. In this case, nothing for the fishing pole. If I go ahead and scroll to the second slot in the item bar, you'll see that becomes highlighted. We see the sword in the slot and we now see the sword on the player's back. This time when I left click, we'll actually perform the action associated with that item, which is swinging the sword. So this is pretty much the basic core functionality of an item bar, which is super cool. Despite that, I think I still have plenty of work to do on this system today. For example, if I were to go and pick up a new item that would be eligible for use in the item bar slot like this sword, I would expect that maybe the first empty slot would auto-populate with that item as it does in a lot of games that use this pattern. In addition to that, if I equip an item in one slot and then try to equip it to another slot, it just duplicates the item. So that's a pretty big bug that I need to solve for. And I think finally, if I am scrolling through the item bar slot with items that I have populated and then scroll to a slot that's empty, it doesn't remove the item that I have on my back. And I think I can actually still use that item. So I just have some cleanup and quality of life stuff to do here, but hopefully it won't take too long. Before I jump in, a few of you have mentioned that you're getting a little tired of seeing this same prototype island in every single one of my devlogs, and I have to say I 100% agree with you. I have it actually quite high on my list of to-dos to create some more environments to explore, because ultimately exploring different environments is going to be a core part of Dolphin's gameplay loop. I just have so many other systems like the one we're talking about today to knock out as well. But in the meantime, what I have done was kind of get off my butt and finally reincorporate that procedural cave system that I developed many weeks ago. So I created some artwork here for a cave entrance. And when you go inside, we see that very gloomy, dark cave from before with cave bats and all. So I'll try to show some more of this in my videos and ultimately create some more exciting environments in the very near future. All right, it is now noon here on Saturday, and if I wanna have any hope of editing this video for you all tomorrow, I think I better pause development here and give a final update for the devlog. In the past few hours, I was actually able to knock out all of those smaller enhancements that I talked about before. Unfortunately, those also uncovered a few new defects and use cases that I hadn't considered before, but I think I worked through most of those, and I'll just show you as much as I can here. First off, when you pick up an item now, it will attempt to auto-equip in the first available empty slot in the item bar. So I can pick up a shell fragment here and it will present itself in the first slot. And similarly, if I go pick up a different piece of equipment like this fishing pole, it will appear in the second slot. 
If I were to pick up another sand crab shell fragment, the system will recognize that it's already in the bar here and not equip another instance of it. Problem is, I still need to figure out a way to show the little marker for how many of these you have in your inventory right now. We actually have two in the collection bag, but that number is not shown here, at least not yet. With a few items in the bar, we can now see how they display on the player's back. If a particular item is not marked as equipment, such as the shell fragment here, it's not going to display anywhere on the player. But if we select something that is marked as equipment, such as the fishing pole or the sword, they will display. And they now disappear if you select a slot that either has nothing in it or a non-equipment item, again, like this sand crab shell fragment here on the left. That's really all I set out to accomplish this afternoon, but as I was playing with the item bar, I realized it needed just a few more tweaks. And the first of these was moving items between slots in the bar. So you can pick up and drag an item from one slot to another, or swap it with something in an existing slot, and you can see that updates there on the player. In addition, we can also right click to clear a slot, and I'll probably make that a little more intuitive in the future, but for now it works. And finally, I had a great suggestion from a patron to enable selecting these slots using hotkeys. So if I walk down the number row here, you can see that we are selecting these slots using the number row on my keyboard. So thanks Reed for that suggestion on Patreon. Though it was a hectic week, I have to say I'm pretty pleased with the progress I was able to make with a relatively small amount of code, crafting what is in my opinion, a pretty powerful and important gameplay mechanic. This new item bar will be a great foundation for not only making combat more dynamic, but also making character itemization more interesting. As you saw before, the item equipment slots here on the character equipment display have been replaced by more smaller slots to which you can no longer equip weapons and tools. What I consider to be more active equipment like these weapons will now live in the item bar for quick swapping. This display will now be the home for passive equipment such as diving gear, wetsuits, and a utility belt that corresponds to that item bar and more. This new equipable gear will likely be the focus of our next devlog. In the meantime, I want to thank you all so much for your continued support of the series and for Dauphin, and I'd like to especially thank my Garami supporters on Patreon, and really everyone on Patreon who checks out my posts and gives me great feedback and suggestions. Thank you all again for watching, don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you're enjoying the series, and keep an eye out for my setup video, I haven't forgotten, it's on the way. Alright, take care, I'll see you in the next one.